Welcome, welcome to the uh, College of Science and Engineering. Welcome to your orientation session for computing and math. If this isn't your flight, you now have the chance to exit now. Everybody here for computing, IT, math, good. No engineers, lawyers, hidden scientists. <laughs> But you, you can, feel free to say, <laughs> you don't have to. <laughs> um, so my name is Ingo Cooper and I have the pleasure to entertain you for the next 45 to 60 minutes where we'll give you a bit of an overview of what it is to be a student at Flinders, in particular to be a student in the College of Science and Engineering. Um, and we'll give you what we think the essential tips and tricks to really make most of your journey here with us. Um, before we start, I want to acknowledge that we are meeting on Ghana land. So Flinders, especially here, is built on Ghana land and we acknowledge the, their connections to the lands and acknowledge elders past, present and future. Flinders is actually teaching across a whole variety of Aboriginal lands and we acknowledge that this is Aboriginal land that has never been ceded. So today um, we'll have about 50 minutes of a program for you here and then some other activities. So we'll start with a bit of welcome. Then we have a range of people telling you where to get help, how to survive, how to make most of your time here. The, probably the most important session will, is what's called Q&A because Right. We as academics or professional staff, we can tell you whatever we want. We will ask the stu current students actually what is the truth and the real tips and tricks. And that's, I think, will be the most important. But so to start us off, I'd like to introduce the Dean of Education for the College of Science Engineering, Professor Giselle Rampset, to give an official welcome. Hi everyone. I think I had the pleasure of meeting many of you already and just a, a, a small chat outside this morning. So I'm Giselle. I'm the Dean in the College Dean of Education in the College of Science and Engineering. And it really is my pleasure to welcome you to Flinders University today, along with my colleagues. You'll meet a lot of my colleagues this morning. You have met Ingo for your enrollments. We have Aaron and Tash that you'll hear from shortly. We have your teaching program director, Dr. Carl Mooney, that you'll meet with, with, with shortly. Uh, we have Dr. Brett Wilkinson. Several of you are doing game development. I've met several of you this morning. So Brett will look after you. We have Ricard. Um, we have Greg, Dr. Greg Falzon. And we have Dennis, um, who has joined us from Switzerland. Austria, sorry, sorry, got that mix wrong. Um, so we have quite a lovely team. We have Natalie and Rachel from our ops team who is here as well to support you. And at Flinders University, we will support your success. We're here for you. We have Dr. Marsha Smallhorn, our student success lead, um, who will make sure that you know you are supported as you start off. First year could be different, you know, you're coming from school, from overseas, different expectations um, of you. So we have a team to support your success. So here at our Flinders Tonsley campus, we, we opened this, this campus in 2015. So it is relatively new. Um, it's where Mitsubishi used to make cars. But as you take a walk out, you'll see a number of different companies, different industries. We do things in a very relevant way here. Um, you know, your field, computing, IT, AI, cybersecurity, game development, all skills in high demand. So as you walk out of this building, you will see, you know, possibilities uh, for the future. You know, we have gone through a pandemic. We have seen where IT skills, computing skills are really necessary um, in almost everything that we do, accessing government services, banking, shopping, groceries, um, education, work, and so on. So it will only intensify to do, to do things safely. I've met many of you interested in cybersecurity with AI that's changing everything. Um, you know, so a lot of opportunities for the future. So hopefully you find yourselves, you see all of the exciting possibilities for your next steps. 
um, but also that you you make friends. Um, so take the opportunity to meet uh, people next to you today because you will roll with a lot of them through orientation. You will you'll get to know a lot of them. I know if I reflect on my orientation journey, I would have met a lot of the friends that I had for my first year at all week, you know, so in activities that the international office may have for international students and for Flinders, for all of our students, take the opportunity to get to know um, your colleagues. Now, I did, I was talking to some of you that you're feeling petrified at the moment. You know, you may not have had a school that may have offered computing for a long time. I actually did computing in school. I did computer science. I was based on, uh, on the register system of O levels and A levels. And I did computer science and math. Um, I don't, I'm not forgetting the data scientists. Any of you doing data science? Math? Yes. So I did computer science and math for A-levels. Um, and, um, and then I went on to do information systems. But for my, my master's, I did computer science as well. So, you know, I know your journey. I know it could be very exciting coding and debugging and having that sense of accomplishment. I spent many an hour, two in the morning doing that, but the sense of accomplishment was so great um, because you could build things, you could develop a solution, and you could do things in a really interesting way. Um, so if you have any problems as you go through your studies, come to us, but it is a very exciting journey. Your, fi your field is in very high demand, so we look forward to seeing what you do next. We look forward to seeing how you grow and evolve and develop. Uh, but this week is really to feel connected, to feel supported, to make those friendships and those connections that will see you through for a successful journey ahead. So welcome to Flinders University, and we look forward to all getting to know each of you on an individual level. Thank you. Thank you very much, Giselle. Um, so is it true if you're debugging something, are you in principle a detective investigating a murder where you are actually the murderer? <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so thanks for this welcome. I would also extend, like to extend our welcome to the people that are online. We have a few joining us online. There's the, ca the camera is up there. I'm waving to the camera. Um, welcome. You're also part of this orientation session. Um, you don't get to see Tonsley, but maybe you'll come and at some point and visit actually the campus. If you're online and you have questions, feel free to chat. We have somebody monitoring the chat and they will be able to answer some of your questions. Um, good, so let's just jump right in and give you a few tips and tricks what is really needed to make your study, your degree a success. So we'll start off with um, enrollment and course advice. So who has, is already enrolled in all your topics have you survived going through? Very good. Um, was it was it very complicated? Yeah. Um, so if if you have any problems and questions, we have course advisors. So Aaron is leading the team and will tell you a bit what they can do to help. Okay. Thank you, Ingo. Um, my name is Aaron, and I'm part of a team of advisors. I also have my colleague Tash here, um, who is based here at Tonsley. Um, I'm primarily based at Bedford Park, but we'll be here from time to time, so feel free to say hello. Uh, we also have another advisor based over at Bedford Park. We have um, drop-in uh, enrolment um, course advice sessions there. Um, we've just got the, um, the information at the bottom of the slide here. Um, but here at Tonsley, um, you can come in uh, to the front desk and ask to, to speak to primarily Tash um, or myself if, if I'm on um, that particular day. Um, so I'm just going to run through a few things um, that we want to make students aware of um, when they're looking at progressing through their degree. Uh, primarily getting used to handbook, um, the link's just at the top of the, the slide and I'll just run, run down it as we go through. Um, handbook is basically where all the rules are, where all the links to the topic information is as well, prerequisites, that sort of thing. I see a few of you nodding along, you may have already uh, become a bit familiar with it. Please get used to this, uh, the page for your particular course. Um, have a look through the topics. They are laid out in the sequence that you're meant to take them as well. So please try and stick to that. And that brings me to the next point of the study plan, which is a handy little uh, one, one page. 
maybe sometimes two, depending on how big the, the course rule is. Um, but that just neatly lays everything um, out just so that you know what the, um, the topic code and the topic title is. Um, and you can just get a bit of a snapshot. We tend to refer to that as well when we're giving course advice to students. So if they're progressing through their degree, you may have had a hiccup here and there where you um, perhaps failed a course or we need to, to swap one out for whatever reason. Um, we will give you a personalised study plan. So you'll hear some of this jargon being used. Um, if you've got any questions, please come and, and see us by all means. Um, we also have a, um, a portal um, on the Flinders website called Ask Flinders. You'll hear that referred to a lot by myself, your um, uh, course coordinators, um, even some of the students um, here as well. That's basically a catch-all for any questions that you have. Um, so if it's relating to, to course advice um, or progression through your degree, it will come to myself, Tash, and, and our um, colleague, Jackie. Um, other areas like finance will go to student finance, timetabling will go to a timetabling team, that sort of thing. So please ask questions and ask them early. That way we can try and get, get on top of them and get you the information you need so that you can succeed. Um, Ingo just um, asked before about um, people enrolling in, in their topics. I'll just draw our attention to um, international students. Um, it is critical that you make sure that everything is in accordance with your visa um, and you may liaise between um, our team and the international office just to make sure that everything's um, above board. So welcome to Flinders. Um, I'll just ask, does anyone have any questions from any questions at this moment? A lot of information. So, it, thank you very much. Maybe there will be questions afterwards. Yeah. We'll see. Um, I think Aaron mentioned something quite important: is the the different terminology at Flinders. Right? We we are studying topics. This is the smallest. Every university has a different thing. Topics lead to courses. In other universities, you will study the courses that lead to degrees. You'll get used to it. It's a bit confusing, but Take some time. So, very good segue to the International Student Service. So, who came from overseas? Yeah, I feel welcome to Australia. I'm, I came almost 14 and a half years ago now from Germany, and it's a strange country, let me tell you. <laughs> I still find it very strange, some things, um, but it's a very nice place to be, so welcome. Um, you might have already encountered our international student services, but we have Nina here to tell you everything about what they can do for you. Welcome. So, as per Aaron says, the international students, you, you need to make sure that you enroll as per your, you know, still um, COE. So, my name is Nina, one of international student advisors. Um, as you see, this is our team. We have five international student advisors, based one at um, City Campus and four at Bedford Park. So, um, like what Aaron said, please ask, and it's okay to ask for help. So, ISS is the first point of contact um, for all international students. So, please come and ask us, email us, and um, you, we can come and be contacted. If you go to Ask Flinders and select category, make sure you select International Student Services. Okay, if you, if you select International, it will go to another area, um, Flinders International Marketing. So, um, so what can we do? So we we here to support you to answer your questions, to refer you to other services, and we also offer meet and greet service. If you have friends who are still overseas who haven't got visa and will come, please ask them to contact us because we provide the airport pickup meet and greet services. We all also engage you um, international students as uh, volunteers. We have a, a program called FISEF, Flinster International Student as a partner. So um, we also issue letters and we host orientation. Um, as some of you know, we've done the success series. So we already as part of the orientation. So the next, the last, so we already had um, one last week, one yesterday, and the last one is next Monday. And make sure you register, okay? We also um, host um, social activities and we have the big welcome um, event for international students this Friday. So please register. 
international student only, sorry for welcome event. Um, yeah, so um, please um, feel free to come and see us. We have the present here for the next three weeks until the last day of enrollment. So our, our the um, you know, we are based on level three, you know, the meeting room three um, opposite to the reception desk. So please come and see us if you have any questions. OK, thank you. Thank you very much. Do we have any questions at the moment? When is the last day of remote? We'll come to uh, that in a minute. 8th of March, it's the Friday in week three. Good, so. Now, we talked, if you have problems enrolling in things, we have course advisors, if you're international students, there's a whole team that will offer you whatever, they will help you with all the questions you need. Um, if you need some academic advice, we have um, student learning support services. And they, they're great. They offer a whole range of sessions, workshops, help, whatever it is in terms of academic studying. So they have some, for example, English for academic purposes, where they deliver some modules on paraphrasing, writing, reading, and all these things. If this is something you're struggling with or just want to refresh a bit, that's definitely something where you can go. Um, they provide study resources, again, on writing, different assessment types. Right? We, you will do a whole range of assessments here. And sometimes I don't know what these assessments are and how they do and what you need to do. There's help. I mean, the academic staff that will teach you, they can also help you. But if you want extra help, something, the SLSS is really there to help with a whole range of things that we might not be able to help with. So if you want their help, right, scan the QR code, Google for student learning support services. You can book one-on-one -on -one sessions with them. They offer workshops. There's a whole range of activities that where you can engage and they are there really to help. It's one thing that comes over and over and over again today is ask for help. Right? We are here to help. We want you really to succeed and we will try our best to help get you there. There's a lot of activities um, available. There's a lot of resources available. They're there for you to grab. I can't see in your heads. Right? I don't know when you're struggling with what you're struggling. So feel free to reach out and we are there to help. We want to help. Um, on top of being successful and in your academic career, it's very important to look after yourself as well. And we have some success and well-being advisors. And Mikaela will tell you a little bit what they can do. Yes, thank you, Ingo. Um, so I am Michaela, a student success and well-being advisor here at Flinders. So as it's already been mentioned, your success and well-being is very important and it's not always just about your academic achievements. It's also taking care of your mental and physical health and any personal circumstances that might come up for you throughout your journey. So we are advisors here at Flinders who are dedicated to supporting students that are facing challenges. So we want to help you get your studies back on track identify and achieve goals and navigate the university system because it can be really tricky sometimes and there's heaps available like we've already highlighted, but you don't always know where to go, what you need, how to access it. So our team is here to hopefully make that easier for you. So I've listed um, some of the services. Uh, you can go and meet with FUSA outside afterwards, the student association. Um, I would suggest going up to Bedford if you ever get the chance to suss out the Oasis Wellbeing Centre. Um, lots of opportunity there to enhance your wellbeing through programs and connect with other students. We've got counsellors, disability service, doctors, you name it. Flinders pretty much has you covered. So you can book in with me uh, through our website or your topic coordinator might also refer you if they ever feel like it's necessary. Um, we also send a text message out in week three. So this goes to all students just checking in on your well-being. 
we just say, hey, how's it going? And if you need assistance, you can contact us that way as well. Thank you. Good. Any Thank questions? You. Any questions? Do they have to pay for anything? Free of charge. Free of charge. That's what we want to hear. Very good. <laughs> um, thank you very much. Um, so let's assume you, you, we, you look after yourself. Maybe join a club. That's actually a good thing to do. Um, you've enrolled in all the right things. So what are the top tricks to actually succeed, to pass? to pass your degree, to get a degree in three or four years. So let's see what Carl has to say about that. I guess the first thing I've got to say, if you want to pass, maybe do some work. That would be a good start. <laughs> um, so yes, um, my name's Associate Professor Carl Mooney. I'm the uh, Teaching Program Director for Computing and Mathematical Sciences. I sort of oversee all of the programs that we teach in this in this uh, area of the college. Um, as you can see around here, we've got Brett, Ricard, Greg, Dennis. I don't know where the rest of them are today. They're hiding under a rock somewhere. But these are your course coordinators. So they will be a point of contact for you. And then it might get escalated to me. I might be your teacher, so therefore you could come to me straight away as well. So a few tips and tricks. Not that one. It's, you, you would that, expect computing people. To yeah. <laughs> so, active engagement in topics. Turning up is a really, really good idea. Even if you're an online student, turning up to the online sessions is really, really important. So, active engagement, regular attendance in your lectures, your tutorials, your workshop is a really, really good way to actually learn something. It's a very, very difficult if you miss things, finding time to catch up on those things and watching videos later. You miss one, maybe you'll catch up watching two hours. You miss two, that's four hours you've got to catch up. And I imagine you guys have got a really, really busy life, working and carrying on and having fun and those sorts of things. And we want you to have fun here as well but also we want you to actually engage in these topics because the more you engage, the more you're going to get out of it. Flow. This is where all of your topic information is going to be stored. Right? It's on a platform called Canvas, but it is called Flinders Learning Online. Please check that regularly. Announcements come out on those topic pages all of the time. They are really important to read and other material that you might get as well. Lecture notes, assignments, deadlines, announcements. A lot of these sites will also have a Teams link associated with them. You will be informed of that by your topic coordinator if that is the case. And that's also a really good source to actually get videos of any recordings that have been done for those topics and those sorts of things. You'll get a lot of theory in a lot of your classes they will be put into practice and link those to the applications when you're doing your tutorials and your practicals. We do give real world examples. And as Giselle mentioned, we've got a lot of companies out here in the MAB, the uh, main assembly area out here that we deal with and we get real world problems and we send students out in later years to actually go and solve real world problems with these companies. So it's really imp important. Don't hesitate to ask questions. Anybody got any questions? Ah, hesitation. There you go. So always, there's no stupid questions. Let's get that right, okay? If you've got a question and you don't ask it, I would say that 60% of the people in that class have also got the same question, just waiting for somebody to ask it. Be brave. Don't hesitate. Ask those questions. And all of your classmates will go, wow, I'm glad they asked. Maybe that will stir them on to actually ask the next time. We are here to help. Important dates. This was brought up before. Last day to enrol in topics, 8th of March. Census date, the 29th of March. The census date is the last date where you can actually, if you withdraw before that date, it doesn't cost you anything. If you withdraw after that date, it's going to have to pay. 
So just be aware of these dates. And the last day we withdraw without fail, even though you've paid for the topic, is the 10th of May. So just be aware of these dates. There is a link there on the Flinders website for enrolment dates. Please make yourself familiar with that. It's really, really important. I'll just mention something else and just reiterate a couple of things that um, the SAS team, Aaron's team mentioned is about your course rule and the course study planner. We designed these so that you can finish your degree in the time that we said, three years or four years if you're doing an honours degree. If you vary and decide that, oh, I might just go and do what I want to do, and yes, those topics are in my study plan, but I'll do them in the order I want to do, you may not be able to finish on time. And a lot of the time, we can't do anything about that if you move off that study plan. So please go to those study plans, please look at them, and please enrol in what it says to enrol at the time. If you've got any other issues around that, make an appointment to see your course coordinator. They will be able to assist you in changing that plan if need be. But a lot of the time we get a lot of students saying, oh, I can't finish my degree in three years. And then you look at what they've done and they haven't followed the study plan at all. They've just gone off and thought, oh, that sounds like a nice topic. I might do that oh, that sounds really good, I might do that. And then all of a sudden the topics they have to do that are core are not in the semester that they need them. So it's really important information that you do that. I digress. <clears throat> Any help that you require, ask as soon as you need it. As Ingo mentioned, we are not mind readers at all. I don't know what's going on for you unless you tell me. If you tell me what's going on, the sooner I know, the sooner we can put things in place to mitigate that or to put something in place to make it happen. But if you wait until two weeks before the end of the semester and say, oh, you know, six, six weeks ago I had this problem, there's not much we can really, really do. It becomes really difficult on us and it just stresses you out. So if you've got any issues, sooner the better. The last thing I think you hear is about, oh, no, there might be maybe some more, but email. Flinders email, your Flinders email account is where the university sends you important information. Now, I'm guessing they send you a lot. Yeah, a real lot. So do check it regularly. Put some filters on if you need to about the things that you don't want to see. But certainly the stuff from your course coordinators and your topic coordinators is really important. One thing that I will say for our teaching program, if you want to talk to any of your topic coordinators, use the inbox in Canvas. That is the only way that your course and topic coordinators will talk to you about your topic. Why do I say this? I say this because we get emails to our Flinders account and it's, hi, I need some help in this assignment. Yours blah. And I look at that and I go, I'm teaching four topics. I wonder what topic they're talking about. Who are they? Whatever. But if you send it through the inbox in Canvas, it's logged to the topic. I know who you are. It's got your name already on there and I can address that immediately or within 24 hours. So we're taking the approach in our teaching program this, this, from this year on that if you want to talk about your topics or any questions about your topics, use the inbox in Canvas. And 24 hours, you'll get a reply, not on the weekend. This is not school anymore. We do have a life. I'm sure your teachers had a life as well. But if you send something at 3 o'clock on a Sunday morning, you're not going to get an answer. So just remember... 24 hours, excluding the weekend, use the Canvas inbox. No. So has anybody got any questions? I guess the last thing I want to say before I give the mic back is have some fun. Meet people. And the way to meet people is turn up and engage. And you'll have a great time. Thanks. Good. Thank you, Carl. So meet people. Let's do that. Let's spend the next three minutes to talk to the person next to you. <laughs> or ideally somebody you didn't know. So introduce yourself, get to know somebody. So 
Come week one, you already know somebody. And if you're online, use the chat to talk to each other. Okay, let's get back. Good. Now, if the academics also could sit down. Okay. So, I, I mean, Giselle said that in, in her welcome, and I would just reiterate, I remember my old week where I met some people and come day one in week one you walk into the lecture theater and it's so much nicer to say i've seen you the week before i know you i we've spoken and can i sit next to you and i don't feel so alone anymore and because it is scary right it is it's a new environment it's everything new so it's actually really helpful to not do it on your own but to find some people to go with you don't have to be friends with everybody but you will find some people that Oh, and you're on the same wavelength with them. So we've given you already a lot of information, which hopefully some of what was helpful or will be helpful at some point. Um, but let's ask some current students, and I'll invite them to come to the front, um, what it really is to be a student here. Um, so feel free to ask them the really important questions, like, where to get the best coffee? Do you really need to come? Um, just stand here in the middle. And so I'll give you each 30 seconds to say who you are, what degree you're doing, and one of your top tips, and then we'll open up for questions. Uh, hi guys, I'm Stanley. I'm studying our Bachelor of Computer Science, and my top tip would be um, just start early. Yeah. Just, yeah, just, just start early, yeah, please. Hello, hi, I'm Monica Bose, and I'm doing my Master's of IT. My tip would be just go and use all the services you have at the university 
and talk with your topic coordinate and your tutors ask them questions and get as much as information you want to do your assignments yeah thank you hi everyone my name is jayas lalia uh, and i'm studying masters of computer science artificial intelligence and my tip would be like just uh, be behind the professors like they are all they are not always free for us but like yeah if you email them or if you write them just like be behind them and like like just try to solve your problem with the courses what you study good do you have any questions master i will bribe you if you ask a question there we go so flinders has a very particular affiliation with a certain animal you know what that is? They're the Flinders ducks. You go to Bedford Park and you'll see plenty of ducks. So for asking a question, you'll get a duck. So what's your question? And I will repeat it for everybody. Where is the best coffee? Where is the best coffee? Very important question. Right outside over there. <laughs> so, so here at Tonsley, what food options are there? Where do you go? Well, uh, there are, my, like there were, there are plenty of the food options over here but as i don't eat the meat but my friends like i just used to sit in the canteen over there right beside there yeah so and yeah there's there are the sushi coffees you can get over there uh, i used to like have the french fries and everything over there yeah there's a lot of options over there yeah yeah so there's three little pots outside which says everything there's a sushi place there's funk which is a, another cafe which is a bit further down the map that are uh, there's other places across South Road. So there's quite a few things around here. Um, I do like the Three Little Pots Cafe. So coffee, there, that's not too bad. Um, other questions? Come on, you must have questions. Very good. <laughs> As part of our first semester, we have four, to four topics that we have to enroll. One is in uh, and three of Good. Good. So if you have the question, if you have topics that are at Tonsley and at Bedford Park, how do you commute? commute? How do you go back and forth? How do you manage that? Um, first of all, there's the, there's the loop bus, which uh, normally or, or most of the time runs on time, so it should be able to get you within maybe 15 minutes at most, 15, yeah. 20 minutes, yeah. So you probably, are, like on a, on a bad day, maybe you will be late to class five, to five, 10 minutes-ish, yeah. But you know, it's always good to explain yourself when you're walking in and, you know, just get to work, yeah. So how do you know when the buses are going? Uh, there's the app that you can get on your phone, so you can track and see, like, uh, yeah, the yeah. buses are. And I, I, I would say, right, if, if you have this timetable, it's good send your, the topic coordinator maybe an email that of your second topic and say, look, this is my situation. I'm trying my best. Please don't shoot me if I'm late. Nobody will shoot you. There, there's, there, there's a train. Yes, there's a train as well. Yes, there's a train that goes from Tonsley to... Flinders. Yeah. Good. Next question. All right. I've actually got two questions. Number one. You only get one duck. Oh, oh one duck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. All right. Well, in that case, um, where are the toilets? Where are the toilets? <laughs> Just outside. <laughs> Every floor. <laughs> yeah. But you can you can ask the second question. Oh really? Oh. <laughs> no, it's too bubbly, but I'll ask it anyway. Um, do you need to bring your own device to your lessons or not? Good question. Do you need to bring your own device? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, and you also have uh, computers in your labs, but it's okay. be better bring your one. Yeah, bring your own device. And okay. More questions today. There's another question. <laughs> So if you come by bus and you're late for five, ten minutes, is that right? Not a problem. No. Sometimes, yeah. Not a problem. Yeah. If it's not available, well, 
we are also just people and we we might be late if there's traffic and um do you have any apps you thought you should recommend hmm. what what apps do you have on your phone that are most useful to studying do you have any canvas app yeah so there's a canvas app so what what's canvas <laughs> flow so so this is one of these things where it's it's the flinders jargon right? i think carl explained this quite. We, we have flinders learning online which is your online learning portal the software behind is called canvas and somehow we sometimes we use this interchangeably but, um, and the app yes it's called canvas more questions more ducks more questions there's a question. My question was, um, what's the mentioned before? What's the app called? So what's the app called for the bus, if you take the bus? I think it's called Bus Finder. Bus Finder. Bus Finder? Yes. If you... Well, it, I would say if you go onto the... Oh, Wulunga Charter. Okay. That's the one that's good. Okay. Okay, that's the new one. Good. I've learned something. Wulunga Charter. If you go to the Flinders web page and look for buses, you'll hopefully find all the right information about that. More questions? I have a question here. What's the best study space at Tonsley if you want some quiet time and want to study? That was your question, right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm a mind reader. <laughs> Where do you go? Uh, I'd say uh, recently we have the library, of course, which is pretty good study space. But also on level one, you so when you go into it, you'll see it. But like um, towards sort of the end, you have sort of like desks and boards, which is also a place that I like to study. Yeah. Good. More questions. Oh. Oh, they're coming. I'll come to you second. I'll go to you. He was, he was a fraction of a second faster. Um, for a first year, how much time would you recommend? Good. How much time do we do you, should you invest studying? Six hours a day is minimum, yeah. Six hours a day. Yeah. It, any other, what do the others think? <laughs> The first year, you need some time to understand the topics and uh, the way of approach uh, to do your assignments on time. So for the first semester, you need more time. Yeah. I think it, it, it is really important to set time aside. Don't just think just your timetable time will be enough. At least double that and put some, it depends a bit on you, right? If you are the next. Albert Einstein, you understand everything immediately. You will need less, but let's be honest. Maybe there's one here. Um, <laughs> but so I'll, I'll repeat this for the people online, right? On, in principle, when we design topics, we think should be doable in 135 hours for the average student to get an average grade. So you can do your math, but it is, right? it is hard if you also have a life, if you have to work, you sleep and eat. It's very important to eat and sleep as well. So I think time management is one of the most valuable skills that you can develop. Um, and Michaela just offered her help in time management. <laughs> okay, we have one more question here. Yeah, yeah, I'm coming. I know. Yeah, he's giving uh, me a duck, that's all. I'll keep. Oh, okay, oh. Yeah, that's awesome. All right, so considering that we 
are we committed to bring our own devices here? Is there like specific requirements? With other devices? Very good question. If you bring your own device, which device should you bring? Uh, oh, I think that's more sort of topic specific because it's depending on what topic you're taking, going to different requirements, which software you have to download. So just uh, going through to your flow canvas site and seeing um, what's listed that you need to download and see whether your device can handle that. And alternatively, there are some classes where you do get you do have them in the labs, so you can use the machines there. We have some specification that we recommend that is on the web page. Um, specification for for an ideal device. But talk to your topic coordinators as well. Um, more questions? There you go. I have plenty more ducks left, so get your questions ready. I, I get my steps up, that's the other benefit. Thank you. I was just wondering what this is. Ah. So in, in if you're working here, you have these little things in your tables as a PowerPoint. Ah, so if you need to charge your laptop or your device, we have you covered. Um, more questions? More questions? Here's a question. Are there any chances to do work placements during your degree? That's a good question, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> yeah, of course I gave him a duck. He asked the question. So work placements, have you done any? Have you looked into, can you do it? Uh, yeah, you can for Bachelor of Computer Science. You do have it uh, in your third year. Uh, haven't done mine yet going into the semester and you get the option to choose between either 12 week or 20 week placement. Yeah. Yeah. So there are various options of doing placements, projects, talk to your course coordinators and it, it's a very valuable thing. Any more questions? Yeah. Oh, one, two. <laughs> Do you get two ducks? Oh, he's a repeat, a repeat questioner. Are there any clubs you guys would recommend joining for IT or comp science specifically? So what's the, what's the clubs that we have? We have cybersecurity, and um, you have this FUSA where you have different kinds of clubs you can join in. Yeah, there are. There's a cybersecurity. There's a computing club. Um, and there's um. The, the Flinders University Computing Society, which is another club, um, very good one to join because they also have workshops uh, and different sort of uh, what do I call them, like career events, so you can you're able to progress. Yeah. And some of them actually will be outside afterwards. That was a question. Yeah. That was my question. yeah oh. <laughs> and you have one more. How and where do you join the clubs? You can just talk to Fusa, like in the Bedford Park, and like there's a list of clubs you can find over there, and like whichever suits you can join the club. If not, there's just a club room on level one as well here, where there will be people. There will be people outside during lunchtime. You can sign up there. Um, good. We've exhausted. Oh, well, last question. roughly allocate from getting class to class. Huh. How much time does it take to go from one place to the other? Like on average, like, on just across, like, Tonsley. You mean like in the Tonsley or like you want to go from Tonsley to Bedford Park? I think in Tonsley. In Tonsley, it might take like just around five minutes, like just to shift the class, yeah. Yeah, the, 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 the nice minutes. thing at Tonsley, it's all in this building. So it's often the question to moving from one room to the other, from one floor to the other. So. Here, yeah, that's pretty easy. Good. Well, thank you very much for all these, for all your answers. I think that was, I think, very helpful. There was plenty of questions that we got. Um, so just my little tips and tricks at the end that we haven't mentioned. 
Um, oh, well. Visit your flow page. We've heard this multiple times. In your email, among all the others, you will get an email called ping, which is a student newsletter, which is quite helpful to have because that will tell you everything that's going on. Um, find friends. If you are on social media, Flinders is across a whole range of platforms. And there's Instagram, Facebook. I believe we are on TikTok as well by now. Um, on, I know one thing, on Facebook, there's a group called Overheard at Flinders, which is quite useful to join because there's a lot of students in there and you can ask any questions. Um, yeah, we heard about the FUSA, the Flinders University Student Association. Again, they will be outside for lunch. And really the main tip, if you need help, if you have a question, if you have a problem, if you want to know something, ask. Don't hesitate to ask, and we're there to help. So what we're going to do now is that I will hand you over to your teaching program director and course coordinators, and you will divide them in groups and move them. OK. Carl will come up in 30 seconds to tell you exactly what you're doing. Um, I will hopefully see you at some point through your career. And again, welcome to the Flinders family. Thanks for joining us. You are at the right university, right? the one that is not changing. <laughs> we will be like this for the next years. Um, so welcome. <laughs>